everyone. How's everybody doing? Thanks for joining me. Welcome back. So today's video is going to be a chit chat. Get ready with me. So if you guys would like to stick around and join me, keep on watching. All right. As I promised you guys, I was going to do a chit chat. Get ready with me kind of video where I was going to discuss um, and update you guys on what had happened um, or just, you know, what's going on and just all those just catching up basically. Um, I do have my coffee right now in my little snowman mug. I got this at Walmart, I think like last year or something. I am going to use the Lorac, uh, what is this one? The Shine Bright eyeshadow palette. It just came out not too long ago. I think probably for, you know, the Christmas holidays and everything. And then this is the uh, blush and highlight. This was on sale for $29. That's what made me pick it up because otherwise I probably wouldn't have. This one I already picked up a good while, while ago and I had a $15 gift card. And so yeah, basically got for 15, 15 bucks. And I love Lorac eyeshadows as most of you guys know. So all the rest of the products I will put um, down below in case you guys are wondering. I'm not going to get in specific details, maybe with a few things, but not too much details. So as most of you guys know, I had, or I had my last video up around May and um, basically I prior before, if you had seen, I was having some stomach problems. So the doctors thought maybe I had some diverticulitis and gave me some antibiotics and was going to do some tests and everything. It actually took me almost a week and a half to two, two weeks to get rid, get rid of how I felt. So to make a long story short, I think I had E. coli and I'm going to tell you why. Um, I didn't really get a chance to talk to my doctor about this part because uh, at that point I was feeling great. I was feeling much better. And the only reason why I felt that way was because a week and a half prior before I got really sick, I had a chicken Caesar salad from Pizza Hut and a chicken Caesar salad has romaine lettuce. And around that time frame was when the whole big romaine lettuce outbreak had happened. And I don't know, I like, I just had a lot more symptoms to, to that, um, especially with the fevers and everything, like the fevers I was having was like around 100, 100 and 101. And in looking like both diver and E. coli have, e. coli have the same symptoms. Fevers is what caught my attention the most. And the fevers for E. coli are in around 100, 100 and 101. I mean, I feel better. I've been eating the same kind of foods. I haven't changed too much of anything. And I just strongly feel that that was a possibility that I had E. coli. In the process of trying to get better, um, my brother was in the hospital a couple different times. Um, he was having a lot of different problems with his heart. Uh, and then a lot of his workers wanted time off and I do work part-time for him as a caregiver. So, and so I was taking up some of those hours and it was just a lot. So I really didn't get a chance to film. Started getting used to not filming, I guess, in a, in a sense. That's the bad thing whenever you stop filming after a while. Show you the colors real quick in the palette. It's really, really pretty. Not sure if my lights are too bright shining, but it is really, really pretty. Unfortunately, around August, dropping everything. Unfortunately, like around August, uh, my mom had fallen. She had taken a fall. So we thought she'd be in and out basically, you know, from the hospital. Uh, we kind of figured possibly they might keep her. We weren't 100% sure if they were. And here they kept her in there because they noticed that her oxygen level was low. So she did sprain her leg when she fell, but they found that her oxygen level was low. So they decided to keep her uh, in the hospital and find out what was going on in the whole process. So this happened about 
oh, I don't know, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And around 11 o'clock at night, my brother takes a mild heart attack. So, yeah, it's like, boom, major hit, you know, like both of them. So there I am. Uh, both of them are in the hospital. My brother was in about a week and my mom was in the hospital about a week. He got to come home. My mom, however, did not. She didn't get to come home. She actually had to go into a nursing home which we've been down that road before with her in the nursing homes and everything. You know, she's been in and like stayed maybe even a month or so or more. She was in there probably, I bet you, from August until October. And in the process while she was there, I had some issues with the place. Now, my experience, and if, if you know, you've had good experience and everything with a nursing home, I'm, I'm glad because I'll tell you, the experiences I had for my mom and my brother when they've been put in the home to kind of get themselves back in order and get back at it again has been bad, not the greatest. And this place here that she was at, she was there before. And so that's kind of why she picked it. This time, it just was not. I uh, I had the worst time with them. I had to call um, a couple of times because she was calling me, crying on the phone. Crying on the phone because they, you know, she wanted to go to the hospital and they weren't like listening to her and everything. I actually had to get a little bit in an argument with one of the ladies there. I know I could tell she was kind of very unhappy with me. So I was letting her know that, all right, well, if you're not gonna like do too much of anything, then I'm calling 911 and I will actually have the police there if I had to to let them know about neglect. Of course, you know, they didn't want that. And she was letting me know, well, they have to go through a doctor first. And let me just say, my mom was in there and with that month and a half. She never seen a doctor, like once when she first went in that day. For the first day that she went in there, she saw the doctor. That was it. That was it. I'm furious. I don't like the place. I am very upset with them because I don't feel like they did do right by my mom. So anyway, that was just one incident. What ended up happening was, yeah, the doctor, like when she discovered, you know, like I was serious of what I was going to do, she contacted the doctor. They finally got a hold and they did some scans on her chest x-rays and things, found she had bronchitis. What, and what got me on the whole thing, okay, on top of all this, as my mom was telling me about this one, was a lady came into my mom's room and said, how does your daughter know that you're wheezing? Did she use a stethoscope? If I basically knew who the lady was, I probably would have had some words with her and then turned her in. But she did this while I was on the phone. I was on the phone with the supervisor, basically. So, of course, like I said, they weren't happy with me at all. I told her, I said, I'll give you a picture here. I'm at home with my brother, who is blind, diabetic, on dialysis. No vehicle, mind you. We don't have a car, don't own a car. Means of transportation is a bus, or if somebody can, you know, take us somewhere. Then we had another incident, but it, it wasn't as bad because I think they knew by at this point, you know, how I was with things. So the second time, 
but it took me. I think that's what got me. It, they weren't listening to my mom. It took me to call. So she uh, got checked at the emergency room and she had cellulitis in her legs, which she gets, she used to get a good bit. I had people take me to visit her. I mean, that was nice. There was some, some moments where I got to see her and that and talk to her on the phone a good bit. <clears throat> and October 11th, they were letting her come home. So we were getting things prepared and ready. So my brother's one worker was here, thank goodness, because in the process of trying to get her in the door, we struggled so hard. Like there's a step up to get right into the house. We have a lift to get into the house. There's a step there and you have to step into. And that was even a struggle for her to, you know, bend her legs and, and get in or anything like that. Like she was worse than she's been. And I thought, gosh, I thought they were supposed to help get her up and at it. She struggled to even get up out of her chair because, like, I had to help her to get to go to the bathroom. And she was even struggling to go into the bathroom. And I just kept thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like, it just seemed like she was worse. My husband and I had to lift her off the chair. It took both of us to get her off the chair, which never happened before for me, ever. Like, it took both of us. Went to bed that night. You know, like, we had our chats a little bit. She was very tired. I could tell that, though, for sure. She was very, very tired. And get up in the morning to get her her pills. So I got my mom her pills. And then... She had to go to the bathroom again. I was like, oh no. So I thought, I was telling her, I said, I need to practice this somewhat anyway, because if I'm on my own here, got her out to the bathroom. She was really, you know, like upset how she was getting around, which I could understand. I think it was just hitting her that she was worse too. And you know, I think we both were scared in the direction that we were headed. But honestly, if I could for anything, I would have tried to work something out to where she would have been at home, you know, and would never have to go into a home. We went back out into the living room where her chair was at. She couldn't make it the whole way there and stopped at this other chair. I figured if she rests there and we go at it, you know, just like wait for a little bit. But unfortunately, like me and my brother's worker both tried getting her and it was just impossible. Like we couldn't get her up and out. It was like there was nothing, like she was just dead weight. And I was just feeling like, well, what are we going to do, you know, because... She's sitting on that chair. Well, she was very determined. She didn't want the ambulance and that she was just going to sit on the chair for a while and relax and then just wait and see what happens. It's all right. So that's what we did. We waited to see what happened and all that kind of stuff. Well, tried it again and to nothing. Like she just was dead weight. She knew she couldn't get around. She was not sure what else to do. I know we didn't know what else to do. I knew I'd have to call the ambulance to at least help me get her up and out. But I also knew we couldn't keep calling ambulance to help get her to the bathroom. So we even discussed the porta potty thing. And the porta potty thing was not going to work out too well because she was still afraid but she'd be able to get up off the porta potty like she just didn't have anything in her to do any of that now my brother and I tried convincing her to go to the hospital that's what I wanted I wanted her to go to the hospital but she wanted to go back to the nursing home the paramedics came and they even asked her you know like do you want to go to the hospital no she didn't want to go to the hospital that was on Thursday, the 12th, I believe, of October. 
So my brother got to see her that Sunday then. He went out to the home and got to see her because his workers are pretty nice. The ones that come here for him, like a lot of them do have their vehicle, so they would take him, you know, to go see her and everything. Wednesday came and, you know, got we got to talk to her on the phone. And, you know, she seemed fine and everything on the phone. Um, we pretty much talked to her every day. So Thursday came and I heard the phone ring and I realized what the number was that popped up. I was already awake, so I knew who called. So I went downstairs to see what was going on. And my brother said that they said my mom was kind of a little bit unresponsive or wasn't communicating with anybody out there that they just wanted to make sure there wasn't something else going on or something wrong. And this was probably about 7.30, 7.30 or something in the morning. I'm thinking to myself, I need to get out to the hospital. Well, Josh, my son was supposed to be coming home and he was on his way actually on that day. So I thought, all right, me and him, we're going to go out to the hospital once he gets here. And I stayed downstairs because I wanted to be down there just in case they tried calling. So they did call and they were letting me know that they were very concerned because she had pneumonia. And that's when I thought, oh God, we're in trouble here because my mom had pneumonia before and she was even much younger then. And she had a heck of a time fighting it off, you know, fighting with the pneumonia. They told me that she, they were going to have to put her in ICU and she was having a little hard time breathing. So they were putting her on some, uh, like a, a CPAP kind of a thing or whatever you want to call it. Later we get a phone call. It was probably about three. It was the doctor, which unfortunately, normally when a doctor calls you, you know it's not good news and he was letting us know that mom was in a battle and that she is actually ready to to go I don't even know how I'm telling you this without not bawling and crying I really don't <laughs> She doesn't want to be hooked up to a ventilator, you know, breathing machine or any of those kind of things. And that she's just ready to go. And she's, you know, just talking all like that. So we were like, you know what? We need to get out there ASAP. She was awake. She was alert. She was awake and everything. And uh, it was kind of hard to understand her because they had that. Uh, CPAP thing on her because she was letting them leave that on her for the time being but she didn't want the ventilator. The doctor lets us know that she does have a form of infection and but that was the other thing that they were trying to work on. It was almost like she knew I feel. I feel like she almost kind of knew what was happening in a sense you know it was very hard, not going to lie, because I've I've been around my dad when he was going in and out and kind of comatose, as they call it. And that was that was hard to see. Even to the very end, like I was telling my brother, you know, she was still looking out for him. He had to come home and get something to eat because all his insulin and stuff was here. She kind of was even doing the motion like, go. I told my brother's worker or whatever, the lady that was here, I said, I'm not leaving. I even told the nurses that. I said, I'm not leaving. I'm staying here. Even if I have to stay the night in here and everything, I'm not leaving. She wanted something because she was in a lot of pain. My mom was in a lot of pain. She was having problems with her legs for a long time and she was in a lot of pain. So she wanted something for that. And she just told him that she wanted something to help get rid of, you know, the pain. And they were letting her know that, you know, like, and, and me know that if they do that, 
that her blood pressure is going to drop and we're going to be in another other kind of problem. My mom insisted that, you know, she wanted something to for comfort. She was tired of the pain. I think she was just tired of the pain that she would get a lot from the legs. Cause she'd get so much pain from her legs over the years. And she had like severe, very severe. Um, I think she was getting really bad with neuropathy and she didn't want them to revive her. She already told them that she didn't want to be revived. Like if her, um, if, if she gave out, that was it, you know, like she didn't want, want them to revive her, which mind you, which let me tell you, that's like the hardest thing to also hear about your loved one that, you know, even though, you know, that's their wishes, it's still like a hard thing. And I think my mom had like a couple of different doses of some kind of pain medicine stuff because of the pain that she kept feeling, you know, and it was hard hearing her, you know, cause she was kind of basically moaning and groaning and almost crying cause she was in pain. So yeah, I was holding her hand and I heard the vitals just um, slowly go. Uh, her blood pressure was deteriorating and just everything was deteriorating basically. It was almost like she just, you know, like was at peace and I know they were, they were checking her vitals at one point because I could tell the way they were looking at stuff and like checking things that she was pretty much gone. Then the doctor um, came in and, you know, gave the final, you know, she, she was gone. I just kept thinking in my mind and I'm not going to say the word, but I just, what the happened because I just feel like, like it just happened too quick. Like it was like, boom, they called us, boom, she's gone. You know, it was, it was just like, boom, boom. Um, she did have septic shock, I guess was one of the things on her uh, death certificate. That's what it has is septic shock was one of the things. And I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, the well, pneumonia, pneumonia and septic shock, because we were questioning, you know, the cellulitis and everything, because she, you know, had cellulitis. So my mind's just like everywhere right now. Still, I, I, I'm trying to get back into filming, trying to get things back in order. Uh, so it'll probably take a while for me to do that. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me. I do really appreciate it. Thanks so much for your support. And as always, beauties, please remember to just. Be yourself, love yourself, and let the real beauty shine through. So until the next time, you guys take care. I will see you then. Love you guys. Bye.